many of you expect to live to 100? Okay, quite a few. Well, if you're in your early 20s, you have 50% chance of living to 100. Those are pretty good odds, and those odds are increasing. Back in November, in my speech, The Future Will Be Great, I argued that, well, there's a lot to be excited about in the future. One of those things is increasing life expectancy. Over the past 200 years, life expectancy has been increasing at an average rate of two years per decade. If this trend continues, living to 100 will be the new norm rather than exception. However, long life can be both a blessing and a curse. After reading a book, The 100 Year Life, I found that there's three main things we need to consider to get the best out of it. Finances, work, and personal life. Let's start with finances. As population is getting older, when people live longer, governments find it increasingly difficult to finance pensions. Every tax-based pension system is basically a pyramid scheme that relies on people outside the retirement age supporting those who are in the retirement age. Based on current trends, in most Western countries, this will soon become unsustainable. So, what can we do about it? Well, financial planning becomes paramount. The less we are financially prepared uh, for, for the retirement, the longer we'll have to work in order to be able to, re be able to retire with a reasonable income. Even though that sucks because we need to maximize our own personal uh, savings and investment returns. The second consideration is our work lives. One big trend there is that employees are demanding more f flexibility in terms of either a remote work or a shorter work week. And that's because, well, those lazy millennials are trying to distribute their leisure and education time throughout their working career life as opposed to waiting for their time. A less favorable trend is that of hollowing of the job market. Technological improvements are driving up the productivity and income levels of highly skilled labor and the demand for manual labor. But the problem is with everyone in the middle. If you're not a computer scientist, nor a sex worker, you're becoming more and more replaceable. All of these trends mean that life, life stages are changing. It's no longer just education, work, and retirement. There's also new stages coming in, like Explore, uh, exploration stage or entrepreneurial stage and those will demand us to adapt our skill set to a world that's changing at an increasing rate. This also means that we'll have to learn and relearn new things just to remain competitive, including the sex work. The last thing is of course our lives outside work. Parenthood is getting increasingly postponed to later years Family roles are changing, long-term relationships are more valuable than ever. Also, the new stages that are coming in will demand us to reinvent ourselves, take more risks, and experiment more. And as we know, this will make the reaching the right balance more difficult, because we will have to Because the intangible assets, just like tangible assets, if not maintained properly, like health, relationships, or rotation, also depreciate. This means that throughout our long lives, we'll have to focus on keeping ourselves healthy and fit, which is also good for our health span, uh, focus on making long-term quality connections and fostering our personal brand. At the end of the day, these are the type of things that are worth living for. And funny cat videos, of course. So to wrap up, there, 
to address the challenges and to get the most out of long life. We need to be more rigorous than ever with our finances. We need to learn and relearn continuously. And we need to foster or build intangible assets that truly matter to us. If we get those three things right, a hundred year life will be a blessing and not a curse. Thank you.